What encryption software do you recommend? Hi everyone, Leo Notenboom here for askleo.com. I was asked recently what encryption software I use and recommend. And the answer, as it turns out, is ever so slightly complicated, although it is pretty clear. Uh, the issue is that encryption software isn't really a thing. What it is, is there are different encryption tools that you would apply to different jobs. Depending on what it is you're doing, you might use a different tool to actually perform the encryption that we're talking about. So what I want to run through here are the scenarios that I address personally, the tools that I use, and then also a couple of tools I keep on deck um, for scenarios that I don't use today, I have used in the past, and I want to be available to me in the future. First one is whole disk encryption. Personally, because I am primarily a Windows person these days, uh, on my laptop especially, I use BitLocker. I use BitLocker to do whole disk encryption on that drive so that while I'm traveling, if the laptop gets stolen, then yeah, hackers can't get in. Whoever has the laptop can't get in. Uh, there are other solutions, but that's the one I tend to recommend these days. Uh, make sure, of course, that you back up your recovery key if you're using BitLocker. Uh, BitLocker for your uh, internal hard drive is great, especially, like I said, in laptops. And there are, of course, scenarios where you can use BitLocker to encrypt external hard drives or thumb drives if you're going to exchange them with other Windows machines. For the cloud, we've talked a lot about using the cloud and how I believe it's a very, very powerful tool but you need to be careful with the data that you put in the cloud. You need to make sure that anything that's sensitive is encrypted. I now use Cryptomator to encrypt anything sensitive that ends up going in the cloud. The scenario is simply this. I've got a sensitive document, say a tax return, right? And I want to save that, and I want to save that and replicate it across my various machines. If I use Cryptomator, the only thing ever gets stored in the cloud is the encrypted file. Nobody can get at that file without my master password for Cryptomator. But I can access those files easily on any machine that I happen to be using because I've got Cryptomator installed and I've mounted the drive with my master password. So if you are storing data in the cloud and you want to make sure that that data is secure and inaccessible to anybody but those who are actually authorized. Consider using a tool like Cryptomator to do that. Now, if I just want to encrypt a file or maybe a collection of files and send it to somebody or save it somewhere, uh, some of my backups are done this way, then I'll just use 7-Zip. Uh, basically, current zip tools actually do a very good job of encryption if you supply a password when you uh, create the zip. Uh, like I said, it's one of the ways that I back up some of the things on my system. Great example is that I've got all of these files in Cryptomator, but I back up the unencrypted versions, but I store them safely. And I do that by taking those unencrypted versions of all those files bundling them all up into a zip file with a password. So again, they are encrypted wherever they're stored, but I know how to get at them. And it's a different encryption technology. So if I ever have problems with one technology, I've got the other one backing me up. Zip files are great for this. And I strongly recommend you consider that, especially for single or few file or just a folder type of encryption and data transfer. Now, there is one a small gotcha with zip files is that when you encrypt a collection of files or even one file, the file names are not encrypted. So you'll be able to see that I've got, you know, uh, I don't know, Leo's 2022.1040.pdf, right? You'll see that that's in the zip file. You can't access the file because it's encrypted, but you'll see that it's in there. The solution to that, if that is even an issue for you, because it's not an issue for everybody, but if that's an issue for you, zip the zip file. In other words, um, zip all of the files that you want to be encrypted. It doesn't have to have a password at that point. It's just a collection of files. Then 
zip the zip file with a password. That way, everything in that zip file, including the file names, will be encrypted and the file names won't be visible. All the person who has your encrypted zip file in their hands will see is that it contains another zip file. Encrypted email, gosh, that remains such a mess. It really does. Um, I wish there were better solutions for this. There are no great solutions for this. The solutions that I tend to gravitate towards if I need to send encrypted email is this. I will create a document, zip it with a password, and then send it as an attachment. Again, the contents of that document are protected by encryption, and you're just using email as a way to get it from one place to another. The other scenario that I use is ProtonMail. I have a ProtonMail account, and ProtonMail is basically built on encryption, really good encryption as it turns out. If you're emailing another ProtonMail user directly, your email's encrypted. It's a checkbox. It works both sides. You're great. Basically, you're done. It's like it's the way we would have wanted encryption to work planet wide. It just it's all within the ProtonMail ecosystem. If you need to send an encrypted message to someone who's not a ProtonMail user, what happens is they do not actually get sent the message. They get sent a link to the message. That link takes them to the ProtonMail server where they need to provide a password that you'll have used to encrypt your message in order to view your message. So all of the encryption remains local to ProtonMail. You're not technically sending the message in email. You're sending a link to the message and then your recipient can view the message that way as long as they have the correct password that presumably you'll have given them via some other mechanism. Now, I mentioned I've got a couple of tools on deck. Um, Veracrypt is something that I have available to me. I used it and its predecessor, TrueCrypt, for a very long time. Uh, it's a great solution if you want to do whole disk encryption that is platform independent. If you want to take something from Windows to Mac or to Linux or whatever, Veracrypt is cross-platform. Uh, it's a great way to uh, basically have an encrypted something on your external drive or your flash drive uh, that, again, you can use pretty much anywhere. I don't currently need something like that, but if I did, that's the tool that I wouldn't end up grabbing for. The other tool that I have available to me, and it is, uh, I'll just call it extremely geeky, is uh, PGP slash GPG, GNU Privacy Guard, also known as Pretty Good Privacy. GPG is the open source version of PGP, which is closed. The bottom line is that this is public key encryption for anyone. As soon as we start talking about public key encryption, things get really complicated really quick. But these are the canonical tools to use for that kind of a thing. If you want to encrypt something, for example, that only I can see, you would use my public key to encrypt it. And then only I with my private key could decrypt it. That's the scenario. Public key encryption is basically the basis for the internet. It's, it's fundamentally how uh, security on the internet works and GPG is how it is available at an individual uh, or in some cases organizational level. I don't use it right now. I used to use it to uh, encrypt my backups. Um, I don't anymore. I've fallen back to using zip files to make it easier for others who might need to in the case of something happening to me. But um, GPG is available uh, if I needed to encrypt something to someone else using GPG or if they sent me um, an encrypted, a GPG encrypted uh, file, I would be able to decrypt it using my private key. But those are the kinds of things that are, like I said, on deck. Uh, they're not currently in daily use, but they're available to me. The bottom line when it comes to encryption is to just use the right tool for the job. If you're encrypting whole disks, that's a different tool than just sending a file to somebody else, which is a different tool than using um, uh, encrypted email. Each of them requires the right tool for the job. The good news is that all, there are right tools out there. There are really good tools to make this kind of stuff happen. And I strongly suggest that you make use of them. Hopefully this helps clarify what I'm doing and what kind of encryption tools are out there. For updates, for comments, for links related to this topic and more, visit askleo.com 153389. I'm Leo Notenboom and this is askleo.com. Thanks for watching.